How much better is the new 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook compared to the previous Intel 16 inch that it directly replaces? Well, today we will find out because we are gonna test everything from the new displays, the speakers, the webcam to performance, overheating, graphics and CPU benchmarks and real world tests like Xcode, Logic, Blender along with photo and video editing and more. But before we get into it, I have to remind you guys that we are giving away a $2,500 M1 Pro MacBook Pro to one of you guys, no matter where you are in the world, I will pay for shipping, I will pay for whatever import taxes, we're gonna hook you up. All you have to do is make sure you're subscribed and comment on our videos. Uh, with this launch week, we're gonna choose one of the videos and then one commenter in those videos. So make sure you guys keep coming back and commenting for your chance to win. Now I'm also extremely excited because today we are doing a battery life test. Both of these are at 100%. I'm going to unplug them right now. And as we're going through all of these tests, we'll see what kind of a difference we get in terms of battery life with this new 16 inch in the real world. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut both of these down. I know I shouldn't press the button, but I'm doing it. And we're gonna start out with the exterior differences. Now, if you guys look size-wise, they are not that different. Let me overlay the older 16 inch. Oh, wow. I actually was not expecting this. So the new 16 inch is actually slightly deeper, but it is shorter. Is it me, Vadim? What do you see that? Oh. Let's flip these this way. I was not expecting it to be slightly uh, shorter. Yeah, look at that. So this is crazy that the footprint is actually overall smaller for the new 16 inch, but what about the thickness? Let's set these side by side and bam, look at that. You could see how much thicker the new 16 inch is compared to the previous one. I actually did the math and it's like 9% thicker, but with that said, the new feet are actually a little bit taller. So if we set them on the backs, we could see that the difference isn't as big when you're looking this way. So the difference isn't as big if we're looking at the thickest portion here, but of course the 16 inch is tapered, which makes it look slimmer at the edges. So the new 16 inch definitely looks chunky, but I have to say I do like the new retro design and that also allows for more stuff to be fit inside of it. Now let's go ahead and quickly compare the ports on the left side we have the same two Thunderbolt ports this time it's Thunderbolt 4 but we also have MagSafe now and we have the headphone jack which moved from the right side and it's more convenient there on the right hand side we have another Thunderbolt port instead of two and we have an HDMI port finally and then once again we have an SD card reader that supports speeds of up to 250 megabytes per second now here's something that almost nobody knows with the new 16 inch even though we only have three Thunderbolt ports each one of them gets its own controller when in the past each side each two ports had to share a controller what this means is that these three ports on the new 16 inch they're almost like six ports if you're daisy chaining them because you don't get any slowdowns and this is also why the new 16 inch macbook pro can support up to three 6k pro display xdrs instead of two and along with that we also have a, that hdmi for another 4k display now check this out look how much larger that cutout for the vents is on the back of the new 16 inch it's not from the bottom which means that if you have it on your lap or a blanket the chance of it getting blocked is much smaller and with that if you're operating this in clamshell mode and you're plugging into display you're gonna have much better airflow now with that if we compare the vents on the sides the new 16 inch has vents that are much larger and deeper and wider so even though they're a little bit shorter they're gonna support a lot more airflow now with all of those vents including the new central one, I have to pull out the iFixit kit. You guys know how we do here at Max Tech. We wanna see what does the cooling look like on the inside and what did Apple change? Now I wanna remind you that this 16 inch has the M1 Pro chip, but we bought eight MacBooks. We already have four of them in. We're getting four more this week. So I'm excited to see how the cooling system 
compares for the M1 Max chip that has 32 graphics cores. Now with that, we have a ton of videos coming out. We're gonna answer all of your guys' questions. For example, 16 gigs versus 32 gigs on the M1 Pros, or 32 versus 64 on the M1 Max. Also, the bend versus unbend 14 inch, and thermal throttling with the 14 inch versus the 16 inch with the M1 Max chips. So guys, make sure you're checking out our videos. Every morning we post another video. Come back, and with that, don't forget to comment and be subscribed if you guys want to win one of these MacBook Pros. All right, guys, this is exciting. Let's take a look. Bam, look at that. Look how much larger these casings are for the fan. On the 14 inch, they weren't that much bigger, but here, that is a massive difference. All right, wow, looking at this is bringing out a lot more questions than I had thought of previously. But Eam, look at this. You see this heat sink right here? Yep. Do you see how the heat pipe goes over the actual little fins there? Look how much thicker that is over here. They stick out a ton. And then with that, we see that we have one CPU block that covers the M1 Pro chip that has CPU and graphics compared to two. And of course, we have these larger fans. So we'll see with our thermal test. I'm excited to check that out. But with that, look at these SSD chips. This 16 inch has two SSD chips for the 512 model and then two empty slots right here, just like the 14 inch, the new 14 inch MacBook. But the 16 inch has four chips right here and then another chip on this side and then three extra spots if you get larger capacities. Now that has me wondering, what is the SSD speed gonna be on this 512 model compared to my 14 inch 512 model and why is there another chip? Usually it's linear, about 128 gigabytes per chip. Is that extra just for long-term reliability? If you guys know, let me know down below. Now with that, check out these speaker enclosures and subwoofers. First, they are larger, but second, the actual speaker enclosure is huge. It doesn't have to taper down and be small because of that curved edge design. It is much larger overall, so I'm excited to test out the speakers. And now we have these opened up right here, and the first thing that you notice is that notch. It is ugly, you definitely see it, but of course if you open something up in full screen, it goes away so there's no distractions and for movies and all that sort of stuff, you will not see it, it just gives us that extra space. And with that, we get slimmer bezels on the side, slightly slimmer, and a lot slimmer on the top. At the bottom, our MacBook Pro logo is now gone. And then looking lower, the touch bar is also gone. Now, I didn't really like the touch bar. There's only a couple uses that there was nice for. Now we have these large full-size function keys and this massive escape key. The keyboard feel is identical. They have not changed that. Both of these are excellent. But we have that new double anodized black finish, which looks good. The trackpads are also identical. And the last difference is the speaker. If you guys can notice that the chassis isn't as wide, we have less holes here, but with that said, let's go ahead and compare how the new system that Apple really advertised with better bass actually sounds in the real world. <laughs> Guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Is this a big difference? Well, to my ears, I know that the 16 inch already sounded amazing. It beat out every Windows laptop. It had nice deep bass from that six speaker system, but Apple managed to make it even better. They improved the subwoofers, I said that. They move like 80% more air and you can hear the difference. The bass is lower, it's deeper, the mid sound fantastic overall, the sound sounds more balanced. And it's almost like having a dedicated sub, even though this one has subs, maybe going from like a 10 inch or eight inch to a 12 inch. <laughs> it's a pretty good improvement and the speakers sound amazing on the new 16 inch. And now let's compare the webcams and microphones. This is the Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro with its 720p webcam and its studio quality microphones. And this is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple's 1080p camera and the new F 2.0 lens, which improves the low light performance. Let me know if you guys notice any differences in terms of microphone quality 
and how much better the video looks. And now let's get into the displays where we have a ton of differences with the new XDR mini LED display. First off, it's almost 4K resolution. We have 30% more pixels than with the previous 16 inch. It's also a ProMotion display, meaning it goes up to 120 Hertz, but it can actually slow down to 24 Hertz to match video content and save battery. It can also reach up to 1000 nits sustained and 1600 peak, which I'll show you, but in real world use without HDR content, it's limited to 500, so it should be the same, but both the 16 inch and the new 14 inch are actually slightly brighter than the models they replace. And when we turn on some HDR content, I mean, you guys can see the difference. You're not seeing the full difference because it's not an HDR video, but the highlights pop like crazy. The sun is popping like crazy. Well, at the same time, we have better contrast. So all the shadows have more contrast. The detail looks better. Uh, it is just such a big difference. Where the display really looks amazing is when you're watching movies, especially in the dark. The mini LED has such good contrast. The blacks look almost like OLED levels. And of course, the highlights also pop for HDR instead of being pretty flat with poor contrast in the black bars when you're watching a widescreen movie. Wow, look at that, guys. That is a massive difference with the sky. Now, yes, there can be some blooming if you're running HDR and you have super bright objects on a black background, but with the LCD display and the old 16 inch, you get blooming everywhere because of that single backlight. But in real world use, this is extremely rare. And if you have the lights turned on, you never see any blooming. And now let's get into performance. I wanna start out by seeing, do those five SSD chips compared to two really make a big difference? Let's go ahead and hit start here. I let this run a couple times to get the fastest speeds on both and look at this. We have 2500 read and write on the Intel 16 inch and 4500 write and 5132 read with the new M1 Pro 16 inch. Now what's interesting is this is a 512, both of these are, but our 14 inch 512 was in the 4000s for the read speed. So that different chip configuration is definitely helping. And I'm really curious, how much uh, SSD do you have to buy to reach that full 7.4 gigabytes? Maybe we'll find out in the future. And now let's test out the CPU performance with Geekbench. I'm interested because this is the unbinned version. The 16 inch doesn't have that. So we have eight performance cores here compared to six Six cores plus six extra threads um, with the Intel system. This one has that uh, i7 2.6 gigahertz. We're using the same operating system. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, bam, we have a result, guys. And what a difference does one year make? Actually, Apple Silicon make. So single core, we have about 65% faster performance. This makes everything extremely snappy for simple tasks, but multi-core, Apple wasn't messing around. They're like, we're not even gonna double the performance. We're gonna give you pretty much 2.25 times the performance for the same model that is being replaced. That is incredible. And now let's compare the graphics. We have the 16 core M1 Pro graphics chip here compared to AMD's 5300M. Let's go ahead and run this. And here we go, we have 41,000 on the new 16 inch compared to 24,000. But as you guys may have heard in yesterday's video, the performance isn't properly ramping up with these M1 Pro chips. So here we have a 69% increase in performance, but we will see what we actually get in the real world. And now we're gonna do a gaming benchmark that's optimized for metal to see the true differences. I'm running the off-screen test so the resolution isn't changing anything. And I'm testing something else, how much wattage the GPUs take. We will find out as we are finished up with this test. So let's hit start. All right, guys, the test is done. And before I show you guys the scores, check out how much power the Intel and AMD system uses. So to run that test, our 5300M used 54.39 watts consistently. They're almost 55 watts. But on the M1 Pro with the 16 core graphics, it used 21.7 watts. So basically the AMD graphics card or graphics chip uses two and a half times more power to do this task. Now, what is the result that that power usage gives you? Well, in this test, 
it got 88 frames per second for the AMD system, and our M1 Mac, this thing got 165 frames per second. So not only is the M1 Pro 16 core graphics getting almost double the performance, it is using less than half the energy, meaning the battery life is gonna be much better. Speaking of battery life, keep in mind that we are running that test. I think at this point, before we get into the real world test, let me give you guys just a little sample. 64% on our 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro and 82 on the M1 system, but we are not gonna start really pushing it with real world tests. And now let's cover the thermal performance, heat and fan noise. I have my thermal camera out here and let's get a baseline reading. I have 30 degrees on the new M1 Pro 16 inch. And if we look at the keyboard, the actual deck, it is fairly cool, 27. Now moving over to the Intel 16 inch, we have that big hotspot right there. And the top temp is also 31 here, so not a huge difference yet. Let's start with our test, and bam, right away, our Intel machine hits 50 watts, 85 watts, 88 watts, 89, oh my goodness, 90 watts of power usage, and the M1 Pro Unbind is only using 27.6 watts and that is staying at that peak. The Intel Mac hit 97 degrees and then the fans kicked up and it lowered the wattage in order to cool itself down. Whereas the hottest portion of our M1 Pro Mac is now sitting at 50 degrees Celsius. That's actually the power supply proximity. The dice, the hottest part is at 46 degrees Celsius compared to 96. It's been three minutes so far and the fans are basically at idle on this 16 inch. They are silent and they're barely spun up. Well, one was literally shut off right now, but looking at the 16 inch, they are almost maxed out, running at 4,800 RPM and slowly climbing. And now they are fully maxed out. That is crazy. And going back to the 16 inch M1 Pro, look at that. We're right there at idle, and then here, just a tiny bit, literally, what is that, 160 RPM over? This machine literally is silent. I can't believe it's doing a full CPU, 100% workload for five minutes now, and it is just staying crazy cool. Guys, the 14 inch ran cool, but this 16 inch is on a whole nother level. In case you guys didn't know, there are actually vents here by the display that easily let out hot air, whereas the old design it had to go to the back anyways because this section was completely blocked and that definitely helps. You can actually see it right there where the hot spots are on that screen. That's the hot air coming out of there, even if the fan's basically at idle. And the hottest spot is that screen at 41 compared to the Intel system. Wow, 45 degrees right there definitely hotter overall. And of course, with the 16 inch running so cool, we're still at the full 3.228 gigahertz. Whereas this one, it did down clock uh, all the way down to 3.3 right there. Um, right now it's running at 3.39. All right, we are done. Let's wait for the Intel model. And I'll give you guys a little tidbit. This thing ran at 68 watts most of the time until the end, it had to slow down even more. Compared to, compared to a solid 27.5 for the M1 Pro. That means that the Intel is using two and a half times more power, just like the graphics were. Our Intel 16 inch scored 7,128. That's a pretty sad score compared to even the M1 chip that sips power. And the 16 inch M1 Pro chip scored 12,276. So we have 72% more performance while using two and a half times less power. And now let's see that performance put into use for programming. We are gonna run our Xcode benchmark. Shout out to Max Marimenko for making this benchmark for us and the terminal command that makes it super easy to run. Bam, the code is now compiling. Our CPUs are fully maxed out and bam, the Intel is finally done. The fans are still blaring, whereas the M1 Pro, fans didn't even turn on. And what's our difference here? Well, 
we have 279.6 seconds, basically 280 compared to 104. Wow, that is 2.7 times faster. So for 3D rendering in Cinebench, we saw 72% here with optimizations and with a unified memory and all of that good stuff, 2.7 times faster and completely silent. That is incredible. And now let's go ahead and test out Logic Pro. Just so you guys know, we're gonna add in more tests with each video that we're putting out. So make sure you guys stay tuned. And here we're gonna start out with 80 tracks. We're gonna see how much CPU usage that we have and how much basically tracks these computers can handle before they overload. And look at that. Over here, we're at 84% basically. And here with the M1 Pro, we're only at 43%. Oh, we just got a system overload. Of course, we have frequency spikes, stuff like that. So it looks like the Intel one couldn't even handle 80. I'm gonna go ahead and restart that at 79. And here, we're only 43%. So how about we go up to 120? Even 120 tracks is only 57% of the CPU. Man, all right. How about let's enable all 140 here. The Intel crashed, so we're gonna go down to 79. Wow, the Intel's hitting 100 degrees Celsius while doing this, but it hasn't overloaded yet. All right, it looks like the Intel Max is out at 78 tracks, and our M1 just did 140. Bam, it crashed with 160, so it's somewhere between there. And bam, it just finished 155. So that means that it could do almost double the amount of tracks in Logic compared to the previous i7 Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro. And now what about photo editing? I have Lightroom opened up right here. In our next video, we're actually gonna take a look at Affinity Photo, but let's go ahead and switch through these massive files. As far as speed, they basically look to be identical. The faster SSD doesn't really look to be helping in these situations. Let's zoom into this 42 megapixel image about the same on both. And let's export these 50 edited raw images to JPEG. Wow, the M1's already at like 60% compared to like 20 here. And I'm actually really excited to test out the N1 Max chip because it has that crazy 400 gigabyte per second bandwidth. And that definitely helps with Lightroom. So we'll see that in the future. But for now, it is almost done. Bam, okay, there we go. This one's not even halfway yet. And bam, finally the Intel Mac is finished. This took three minutes and 47 seconds for this 50 edited raw file export to JPEG compared to one minute and 23 seconds. That is 2.73 times faster, almost three times faster for, and of course, this is also gonna go into effect if you're making previews, if you're doing HDR stuff, it's gonna have a massive difference. So if you're a photo editor and you use Lightroom, this is gonna be such a dramatic update for you. And with that finish, before we do Blender and Final Cut, I have to mention the battery life because looking at the Intel system, we are now at 5% battery. We unplugged both of these and uh, four hours and 20 minutes ago. Of course, a lot of the time we we're taking the cases off. We were um, you know, looking at the models themselves, not really pushing them to the limit other than maybe the last hour or so. And so we have 5% here. Go ahead and take a guess what the M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro is at battery life wise, comment down below. And with that, let me show you guys. The new 16 inch is at 52% battery life. Basically double the battery life of the previous one. And that isn't even completely under heavy use. I think if it, we were just doing benchmarks the whole time, none of the other stuff, it probably would be triple the battery life, which makes sense if the CPU and the GPU both use two and a half times, and then obviously the fans have to spin up all the time on this system, all that stuff. So that is a crazy difference. And now it's time for the Blender test. You guys have been asking about it. So I have the latest versions here, and I downloaded the Party Tug sample project that's online. You guys can test this yourself. I have it all loaded up here. Let's go ahead and render it on both. Wow, the M1 was fast. The Intel is now done. It took 43.43 seconds. Go ahead and just guess how long this M1 took. I can't believe this. 
it took nine seconds, 9.24. That is 4.7 times faster to render this scene right here. That's a crazy difference, way more than we saw in the benchmarks. Guys, if you use Blender, my goodness, this is a massive, massive update. These real world results are way bigger than those benchmarks. And now let's get into some video editing with Final Cut. In tomorrow's video, we're gonna test out DaVinci Resolve, but today we have multiple tests here. I'm gonna start out with stabilizing this one minute 4K clip. Now this uses graphics to do this, so let's go ahead and click stabilize on both. I'm gonna hit my timer. Bam, the M1 got finished. Waiting on the Intel, still going quick. Final Cut so optimized. Bam, all right. That was almost twice as fast. We have 7.2 seconds compared to 13.8. Yeah, we gotta get into those little specifics. Basically double the graphics performance for rendering and analyzing all those kind of stuff with Final Cut. Now we are gonna go ahead and do an export. And now I have some Canon R5 footage. This is 10-bit 422. You guys could see that on the Intel Mac, it is stuttering like crazy. Where with the M1 Pro, it's completely smooth. I have a LUT on here. The graphics is at 72%. CP is only at 17%. Fans are completely off. It's playing back amazingly well compared to that stuttery mess. Now, Sony also allows you to use this high-end codec that's very good quality, but very tough to work with. Other brands are as well. So you can see the new M1s kill it with this. Now, let's go ahead and do an export test as well and see how long it takes for a five minute project. And bam, both of them are done. This is a crazy difference. The Intel Mac took 12 minutes and 15 seconds, whereas the base M1 Pro took exactly three minutes. That is over four times faster. And I have something to tell you, this M1 Mac was actually limited by the encoders. The GPU and the CPU were, were not maxed out. It's just the H.264 encoders are at their max. So when we test out the M1 Max model has doubled encoders, that will be interesting. And for our last test, we have some 4K ProRes RAW that is graded. And this is actually very well optimized for Final Cut. It edits smoothly even on the Intel Max before. It's a very great codec, but then when you go to transcode or when you're exporting, it definitely takes some time. So let's take this five minute project and we are gonna export it. All right guys, this one is actually limited by the GPU performance and I saw how fast it was going on the binned 14 inch. This has a non-binned look that we're at 50% already compared to 9% on this Intel system. Bam, we are finished on the M1 Pro. And what's crazy is that this time, the ProRes encoders that these M1 Pros and Mac systems have in there, uh, it actually wasn't the limitation, it was the graphics performance. Now it makes sense why Apple put in double the encoders in the M1 Max chip because it has twice the graphics performance. And these performance, this is just crazy speed for anybody that works with ProRes or ProRes RAW. All right guys, we hit 50%. It took three minutes and 10 seconds. It's pretty linear. I don't wanna wait any longer. Uh, so basically six minutes and 20 seconds for this thing to export compared to one minute and eight seconds. That is literally what, like a six times performance difference that is massive. And keep this in mind, guys, I continued all of those extra tests, Blender and Lightroom and this raw editing on battery on the M1 Pro, and it just jumped from 40 to 39% battery life, while this one, we had to plug it in, I don't know, it was an hour, hour and a half ago in our testing. That is just crazy battery life. So what is the verdict? Well, I don't think we have ever seen this big of an upgrade in one year. And if you're somebody that just bought a 16 inch Intel version a year ago or a month ago or a week ago before this came out, guys, I'm sorry because this is such a massive difference no matter what you're doing. Not only do we have the better speakers, we have the better webcam, the crazy display for HDR, that's a huge upgrade. The battery life, my goodness. Pretty much three times as good if you're pushing it. Massive, massive differences. And then of course we have the performance difference where we're somewhere between 60% all the way to six times the performance depending on what you do. These are just insane machines. And this is only the base 16 inch 
keep that in mind. We are gonna also test DaVinci Resolve and other tests in tomorrow's video. And that one, we're gonna go against the high-end i9 system that has the 5600M graphics. That's like an $800 upgrade compared to the M1 Max as 32 core graphics, both 32 gigs of RAM. That's gonna be a killer video. And with that, guys, if you made it this far, if you haven't yet picked up one of these, um, M1 Pro Max shirts with a little cross off, the Sharpie edition. This is limited time. This is gonna go away at the end of this week. So you guys can use the promo code M1 Pro to get 20% off if you guys wanna support us. With that, we also launched short channels, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, and TikTok. If you guys wanna see little clips before stuff gets posted, make sure to follow us on there. And you guys can click the subscribe button above and comment below for a chance to win a $2,500 M1 Pro MacBook. Thank you guys for watching. Check out one of those great videos right there. This is Max and I'll see you in the next video.